and today I'm going to be doing a full Lego room tour. So let's get right into the tour. The Lego room is divided into two general sections. We have the section over there, and of course the section where the new Saturn V sits. Before we look at any of the displays, I wanted to talk about some new filming equipment that I've been using lately, and that are these two drones up here. Now we of course have the larger Phantom right here, and if you're not aware with drones, drones are another hobby of mine, and I quite enjoy them. So this white one right here, that is the Phantom 4, I believe. And this one right here, that's a little spark. And I have prime been trying to use these things more often lately to try to get some aerial shots. You may notice I did use them quite a bit on the Saturn V project and some of the 747 stuff. And usually what I'll find is this thing works best inside the spark right here because it won't knock it over. The downdraft is much less. That's what I film that with. But when I want more high resolution, more stabilized and better video that won't have a, any risk of the destroying the model, I will typically use the Phantom. They're both very good platforms and I just want to point that out because I want to let you guys know that I am be beginning to use drones on this channel. I know a lot of other channels are using drones too, I believe like Jane Bricks, Canadian Brickyard, they're awesome, go check them out. And so, yeah, I just want to introduce the drones just to let you guys know that those are something that I'm planning on using a lot in the future and really excited to use. Now, once we move on past the filming equipment and i yeah, done with that, we want to get into the displays over here. Now, just to sort of break up the room into some general sections, over here I have my smaller propeller-driven aircraft, and by smaller, I mean under five-foot wingspans or more around three-foot wingspans. Over here, I have the large jets and sort of stuff. The Anything that classifies as ultra-large or heavy gets put over here. We've got the 747, some other stuff. And then over here in this corner, I'm still experimenting with this. I will talk about this at the end of the video, but this is where I'm going to put some space stuff and just some other random good doodads and this such, such. So let's start over here. The first plane that we have here over on this display, and this is general passenger stuff, this is the Constellation, and this one seems to be well liked by a lot of people, and this again was not completely my design, but I really, really do like the Constellation. So this one is got a prominent seat up here at the front, and I really do like where it's sitting. Directly next to that Constellation, we have the B-24 Liberator, and this one has been recently redone, and this was my first build ever. This was built back in 2014, 2015, around that time scale, and I really like this aircraft. It is amazing. It has the power built into the things. The propellers will actually spin because it has power functions inside of it. It's got all the functioning turrets and stuff. I, I really like this one, and it just sort of embodies a classic World War II plane, so that's what I really like about this one. And this one has about a wingspan of, I believe, like two and a half feet in length of two feet but yeah this is just the b24 liberator and it sits directly next to the constellation over here on the display past the b24 we do have the b29 super fortress this is the metallic silver one i do have a non-metallic silver one that is the enola gay that is currently not on display right now because repeats sort of get kicked off so it got kicked under the table but we can see that there are a huge amount of those metallic silver tiles and curved slopes that are used on this those are very very hard to track down and yes they are all authentic they are not painted and yeah that was a fun task trying to find those all on bricklink a lot of years of searching we'll just say that and i'm very happy with how this one turned out and on the very end there it looks like it sort of collapsed on its landing gear but oh well this is the lancaster and i have not done a video on this quite yet there will be a video coming out on it it also has power functions built into its engines and yeah i'm very happy with it and this again is not all my design which is one of the reasons i have not done a video on it but this is generally just a plane that i really like and i really like how the camo turned out so that's why i did it so yeah it's the good old lancaster so after the World War II stuff, or just generally the propeller-driven stuff, which is all over on this table, we're going to sort of hop ships over to this table over here. This area is where I store my large jets, and when I mean large, I mean around five-foot wingspans, or having something that measures over five feet. So that's sort of where we are over here. Over here in the front, we have the good old classic B-52, and this thing was my first large plane. And this was built back in 2015, and has been constantly updated since. And yeah, I'm really happy with this one. Again, this one was heavily inspired by Ralph Zavelsberg on Flickr. Awesome guy. He's really cool. Go check him out. Again, another shout out there. But I have t completely tiled this thing ever since. And yeah, it's sort of been sitting on my table. It has been to multiple shows. It has been to the show in 
World War Brick 2017. It has been to Bricks by the Bay 2017, and that's probably going to be it. It might go to another show in the future, but other than that, it's just sort of been sitting on my table here. I did do a full review of this plane, so if you want to, you can go check that out, but it does have fully functioning flaps and all that lovely stuff, so you can see that. On the back of the wing here, we do see the flaps, and I'm quite happy with how it's been tiled lately, and yeah, so this plane's beginning to reach its point where I can't really do much more to improve it. I mean, there's always things I can do to improve planes, but this one right here, I am quite satisfied with. So as we move on to other very large gray planes, and yes, I'm saving the 747 for last because it's probably the most exciting on this table, we have the B-1B Lancer back there. And this one also, <laughs> Ralph Zablesberg, awesome guy, a lot of design choices came from him because why redesign a plane that's already been designed so well by somebody else? And you get to see a lot of very intricate sort of curved slopes and wedge plates used on this one. And this one took a huge amount of time to build. This one was back in 2016. It was quite a project. And right over here, there is a little switch that you can turn on afterburner lights. It's the brick stuff afterburner lights, or, or at least I turned them into that. So that's something that I really like about this one. And this one is a swing wing. So sorry, I just hit the camera. The wing can slide out like this. I'm not going to slide out now since so we're sort of in a tight circumstance with the B-52 over here because space is a little cramped. But other than that, it is quite large and I'm quite happy with it. It's very nice and... Yeah, like I said, all these things have retractable landing gear, so that one's just sort of been sitting over there. Way over here, this is really the newest of the large gray planes. This is the B-2 Spirit. This is the stealth bomber. And yeah, this one is completely tiled. It uses some curved slopes, or a lot of curved slopes to get that look. There also are some brick stuff lights built into this one. So that is something that I'm very happy with. And all three of these actually went to Bricks by the Bay. And I'm going to get over there shortly, but there are some awards, so stay say <laughs> watching the video for that but yeah this one has a wingspan of about five feet it is very short in the large plane terms it's only about a foot and a half to two feet this way depending on where the tail is at the time but yeah i'm very happy with this one it is sort of wedged back here behind the 747 but that's just where i'm going to put it for now and speaking of the obvious elephant in the room here is the 747 and this one used to be my twa 747 i'm sorry for any misconceptions about that one still being around it is no longer around it has been converted to a pan am 747 and this thing still holds the record for the longest plane and the widest wingspan it has a wingspan of about five and a half feet and it has a length of about six feet so this thing is way taller than me both in wingspan and in length, so definitely something very happy with. It weighs a ton also, so it is just absolutely ginormous. It probably weighs at least like a hundred something pounds, or sorry about if you don't live in the America, but yeah, it's absolutely giant and has four of those huge engines, unlike the B-52, which had eight engines. This one only has four high bypass turbo fan engines, which were very large for its day, though they are sort of small now. And this one does have a double decker, and yeah, so there is again a full review on this plane if you want to go check it out. I highly recommend you do so, since I'm quite happy with the passenger plane. And there are, I don't know how I did it on this plane, but it does have fully functioning landing gear, and the wing flaps do work and everything, so all the features that you would expect on a plane to work are there, so I'm very happy with it. One thing that I have not added yet, which I'm planning on adding, are the brick stuff lights to the end of the wings. They sort of require some infrastructure to be uh, changed around to run the wires through, but after I run the wires through, that should be pretty easy to, just to hook them right up to a battery box inside the inside of the plane, but we're, we're gonna see there. Because this plane, this big, there should be no excuse for them not having the lights on the end of the wings, so I'm going to try to squeeze those in there. The, but the 747 is sort of the elephant in the room that can't be moved. So anything in this room that gets moved sort of has to be moved around the 747. After we move beyond the giant planes, we get to come over here to this sort of shelving unit. And this thing is sort of a little undecided on what I'm going to do here. But I'll just sort of give you a walkthrough of what I got anyway right now. So right here we have the Mercury Redstone Rocket. It's sort of hard to see with the light background. I know it's sort of... Let me try to get a better angle of that for you. But yeah, so we've got the Mercury Redstone Rocket, and below the Mercury Redstone Rocket, we've got some award stuff down here, which I want to show off. 
This right here is from Bricks by the Bay. They're both from Bricks by the Bay, and I'm very happy with that convention. It was a wonderful convention. There is going to be another one in, I believe, July of 2018, so that'll be super fun to go to. But the three large air gray aircraft that I just went over, the B-1, the B-52, and, of course, the B-2 back there, all won the large displays, best historical, so I'm very happy with them for that. And the B-29 won best vehicle for military. So that was a very, very fun convention. I really enjoyed going to it, and I really recommend going going to it. So after the Mercury rocket up here on the top, we sort of moved down to the next level. I'm sorry if there were some shadows there, but I'm trying to film right next to a bright window, so <laughs> we're going to have some issues there. But you can see that this is the lunar module that goes in the Saturn V. It is not currently in the Saturn V or on a lunar display because that took up too much space. But this one also has a full video for it, so if you want to see it in greater detail, then you can go check that out. This little thing right here, that is the Goblin. I don't know why it's there. This is not really where I wanted to put it, but I guess it just found its way over here. So I guess that's where it is for now. And that is my smallest plane. Hooray, it's absolutely tiny. It's actually designed to fit in the bomb bay of a larger plane, but I, that larger plane does not exist anymore. So it's just a little loner out here. And you can see some other small tidbits for the lunar module. Those would actually fit inside of the lunar module, inside doors on the side of it. So. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with how that turned out. And below that, we have some original copies of Life magazine for the moon landings. This is, we found this in an attic somewhere, and it's pretty cool because it is the original copy of the moon landing. There's all sorts of stuff in here about the moon landings and the Saturn V. That's pretty cool. See, I sort of reference this a little bit to the picture of Saturn V that I just built. So that's pretty cool. We have this one, and on the bottom there, there's the, let's see if I can get to it. Mm. Life Apollo 12 on the moon. So this one was pretty cool too. You can see that there are some stuff that this one has that are original to itself. A lot of cigarette and alcohol ads in there. Of course, this was the 60s, but those are pretty cool and good reference material for other rockets and such. And on the very bottom shelf there, we have some parts for the Saturn V. There's the antenna that cannot fit on the tower when it's inside because there's just no room. So that's where that sort of has to go. And off this little shelf here over in the corner here, we have the Saturn V. And I just did a huge video on this. I did a time lapse. I did the main video. And yay, it is finally done. This thing measures over 10 feet with the antenna on the top. Our ceilings are nine feet, and there's about an inch of ceiling clearance up there, so we're cutting it very, very close, but somehow I managed to fit it in here. And this thing is, it's huge, and I'm very happy with it. And if you're wondering about the stability aspect of it, it is actually, it's quite stable if you don't touch it. Now, I'm still working on stability down here and such, and it gets a little wobbly towards the top, but like I said, as long as you don't touch it, it'll be fine. And I'm sure if I take this thing to a convention, some kid's gonna come up and try to push it over, like they always seem to do, but you know, we're working on it and we're going to try to make this thing as stable as possible and so the public can see it. And there are some little greebling details that I've put down here that weren't down here on the main video, so just sort of see that stuff. And I've actually ordered more parts to maybe make this a little bit more smooth on the side here and add some more of these walkways since there should be more of them. I've ordered parts for about two more of those walkways. So yeah, other than that though, the Saturn V project has basically wrapped up. I'm done buying parts for it, it's it's done. So this is where it sits. I've put it on these two large white tables down here, if you can see those. They're just two large white tables. This is generally where the Saturn V is going to rest in peace ultimately. And yeah, so I thought I would put it right here and I think it looks pretty good there. Right next to the window it sort of lights it up and I'm happy with it. It is very hard for me to access the top of it though. So if anything goes wrong, it's gonna be a little difficult to to access some stuff up there. We need a ladder to get to the top, but other than that, I'm pretty happy with it. So it's, it's an amazing rocket. It did not know I was capable of building something this large, but believe it or not, this might not be the tallest thing I ever build. So stick around to the end of the video because I might share some pretty interesting stuff with you. So beyond the Saturn V, I'm gonna move past the Saturn V since there are a whole series of videos on this thing. So if you wanna go see more videos on it, then be sure to go check those out. They're on my channel somewhere, I'm sure. We have some smaller aircraft. Now, I really do need to build more smaller aircraft. They are pretty cheap to build and people seem to like them. So yeah, I should probably build more of them. But we can see we have the little Harrier over here. We've got the first British jet. Excuse me, that was not the first jet. I used to have the 
model of the first jet, but I decided to take it apart. Here we do have the first stealth plane. This was one of the very first stealth planes in existence, so I thought I would memorialize that in LEGO. So that's all I really have for these shelves here. I'm going to move over here to this corner over here, but first, before I do any of that, I want to talk about some planes up here. We have the, I can't, I can't get a very good angle of them, sorry, but I have the B-58 and the World War One MB-1 bomber. And that's all that's really up there for now. More room to expand, great. But talk about room to expand. I'm sort of thinking about other projects in the future. So I've got a lot of playtime or sort of, sort of, how do I say this, build time out of the Saturn V. It was a big project that took a lot of time, but I also was able to make a lot of videos off of it and it seemed like people liked them. So what I was thinking is Elon Musk is building his new um, BFR, right? So after he does that, I might be able to do that in Lego. Now, as long as it's not too much bigger than the Saturn V, a few inches larger will be okay. But if it's too big, it won't fit in here. But I might be able to do the, the, the small BFR, you know. I think there's two of them. I'm not sure. I have any, if, we, if there's any SpaceX fans, you guys can let me know that down in the comment section below. But it should be about the same width as the Saturn V, maybe a little larger, maybe a little smaller. Probably white, though I don't really want another giant white tube sitting in my room. I'd rather do gray, to be honest, and have some metallic silver in there too. But yeah, I think that'll be pretty cool here. And what I'd probably do is I'll probably take out these tubs back here and there's just about enough space back here, see if I can maneuver around here, to fit two large rockets. Now, what made this rocket such a pain in the bum to do was that it required the launch pad to really get the realistic feel. I had to build the launch pad, which was a whole nother, basically a whole nother rocket in its own. If this thing did not have the launch pad, then I would not have any problem storing it in a corner. So yeah, that might happen eventually, but it seems like after the space shuttle, which is the next project, which I have already started buying parts for and designing, because now if this thing is done, I can focus all of my attention on the space shuttle. So I better get start building that soon because I did promise you guys that at 1k subscribers that I would do that. So that's for sure. But after the space shuttle, I'll probably start building some passenger planes since people seem to really like those and they always seem to do good. And yeah, passenger planes, people seem to like them. And I want to do stuff like a 707, a 737, some other variants of those kind of passenger planes. But yeah, that's just generally my plan. That has been a full room tour. I know I've probably been ranting on for at least 20 minutes now, so I'm sorry if I wasted too much of your time. But yeah, that's all I really got for this video. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to hit subscribe so I can continue building large things like this. And that's all I really have for this one. Bye for now.